Well, we are so delighted, and uh, it's a wonderful experience to have you here with all these wonderful entrepreneurs uh, in the Multiple Club. Yeah. So, as you know, they all range in different sizes, right? Some multiple six figures, multiple seven figures. We've got some multiple eight figures, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear from you in your own words, kind of how you got started and how you're you're here today. Okay, super. So, uh, I'm going to go all the way back, um, and uh, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. One of six kids. I was the fourth. And my father was a bartender. So there, there, was, there wasn't a lot of money around. In fact, by the time it got to me, the fourth child, my, my dad came to me uh, as I was getting ready to go to high school. And he said, hey, you know, business is okay, but you know, it's tough raising six of you and I don't have any money for you for high school. So you're going to have to you know, make your own uh, payments uh, to get into school. So obviously the same for college, right? So that was motivation for me to be an entrepreneur. And and, and so my, my father eventually saved up money and opened up his own bar. So it was a Harrington's Irish pub. Nice. I was 11 years old working in inside the, his restaurants and bars and, and, and he ended up being a restaurateur. So when I said he was a bartender, I don't want to make it sound like that was his passion for life. Life, he wanted to own his own business, so he was an entrepreneur, and and so I was working a forty-hour week at eleven years old, going after school to his place and washing dishes and serving whatever it took. Because you know, when you're the the, the, the son's the son of the owner, right. you pretty much got to do everything, right? right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I'll never forget. Uh, I'm, I'm, he and I are behind a bar. One of the bartenders didn't show up, and he's handed here. Give that guy this rum and coke, and I'm like, he's like. I'm serving drinks and stuff, and they're like, hey, CNN could be outside with a helicopter, you know, like, what's going on in, you know, child labor laws and 11-year-old serving Maybe drinks. And, yeah. so, so, anyway, make a long story short that my dad then said, okay, this is how you're going to pay for all this stuff. you got to start your own business. So, I started a driveway ceiling business when I was in high school. In Cincinnati, if you had cracks in your driveway and it got cold in the winter, they would freeze triple the size of the crack. So, I'm not Knocking on doors, ride my bicycle up to the house, knock on the door, hey, I can fix these cracks right here, beautify your driveway. I was doing 10, 11, 12 jobs a week wow. in high school. And then when I got to when I went to college, my, my father said, Hey, you can't, this is a summertime business. You need monthly income because you've got you need an apartment, you need books and tuition and, and rent and school and cars and insurance and all that stuff at the age of 18. So I started a heat, I had to do something year round, started a heating and air conditioning business. And people say, well, why'd you do that? I said, well, I was good at sales, wasn't afraid to knock on doors, and I had, I had an amazing lead source. I, 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 I got um, a deal with the courthouse in Cincinnati, Ohio to get all the new homeowner transactions, and so I contacted them via telemarketing. I had two full-time telemarketers, and, and this is now, I mean, this is like 45, 50 years ago right. almost, okay? Because you know, I'm dating myself. Huh? When telemarketing was good. When telemarketing was good. So we're, I'm getting, so we basically, we called everybody that bought a new house, said congratulations on the purchase of your new house, and we got a free gift for you. We're going to come out. Don't turn that furnace on. It's a, it's a dangerous appliance. We're going to clean it. And, and give you a free furnace uh, checkup. And so everyone said, yeah, come on out. Well, boy, we were installing furnaces and air conditioning systems while I'm going to school. Wow. So I had that business built to five million in sales over the next couple of years. And what year approximately is this? This was 1970. 5, 76, 77. Five a year in 75, yeah, back in the 70s. Wow. So this is equivalent to at least triple that. Oh yeah, for okay? sure. I mean, I had 25 employees, six trucks going out every day. And meanwhile, I would go to school in the morning, and then by the time I got to the office, all hell had broken loose. Okay, so I'm like, I, I can't, I can't finish. I, I dropped out. So uh, my junior year, I dropped out of University of Cincinnati, and and at the end of the day, heating and air conditioning, we, we were, I was making money. It was fun. I was buying homes and all of this, and so here I am. I'm said I ordered cable television, and and I'm like, you know, how many remember TV? Black and white television, anybody here? Okay, me, I do. How many remember before cable? Oh, when yeah. there was only like five channels, yeah. okay? So I rem I ordered cable TV. I got a house and my first package, Cincinnati, Ohio, was 30 channels. And so I'm going through all 30 channels. I get through MTV, 24 hours of music, 
24 hours ESPN sports, 24 hours of news, CNN. I get to the last channel, it's Discovery Channel, Channel 30. And that was what was on the screen, color bars. So nothing. Zero, just those bars. So I called the cable company and I said, hey, your guy left. I've been going through all the channels. I said, man, do I love this cable thing, especially the 29 channels I'm getting, but there's nothing on channel 30. What is this discovery thing? And, um, and this is, again, this is back in 1980, early 80s, 82. And so the guy said, oh, he said, you must have tuned in when Discovery was off air. It's a brand new channel. They don't have a budget for 24 hours a day. It's an 18 hour a day channel. And I said, oh, and so this is all I'm going to get for six hours? And they said, yeah, that's it. You're going to get those bars. So I said, well, what if I have something I can put on there? Yeah. And I said, would you be interested? He said, look, you, we're cutting deals. We just opened up cable here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Come on down. So I went down. And, um, and, and, and saw these guys and, um, and, and, and I said, I'm gonna find some products. So um, it, it's sort of a long story that, that you know, from, from here what happened, but I, I was at the, the Philadelphia Home Show because I, I, I was used to do a lot of like trade shows and stuff. I mean, I was telling some guys here earlier, I, I, do, I do the houseware show, the hardware show, the fitness show, the beauty show, the automotive shows, the consumer electronic show. I, and before COVID, I did about, would go to 25 plus trade shows a year. And so um, I, I, I'll never forget, I'm at the Philadelphia Home Show. There's this guy, he's got a knife in his hand. He's cutting through a Coca-Cola can, through a muffler, through a pair of sneakers. It's called the Ginsu knife, he said, right? And so this guy's name was Arnold Morris. And I watched him. He sold, I, I bought a Ginsu knife set because it's like, oh, wait, well, yeah, one Ginsu knife, 1995, but wait, there's more. You get it, if you order right now for the first 10 people, you get a second Ginsu knife, absolutely free, plus six free steak knives, a paring knife, and a bread knife, okay, for 20 bucks. I'm like, I, I said, I'm in, I bought it. And so did all these other people, and I'm watching this, and then, I've tried to talk to Arnold before I got a chance to talk to Arnold. He's grabbing people and doing the exact same pitch all over again. And so I listened to the pitch and I said, this guy has been doing this for years because there was the same cadence, the same words, the same everything, right? Huh? Right through the, yeah, the muffler, the sneaker, the this, the that. And, and so, um, he got on break, and and I said, I said, Arnold, I said that's the probably one of the greatest sales pitches I've ever seen. I saw you collect thousands of dollars in in you know, 30, 40 minutes, and he and he said, what do you want, kid? He says, you know, I'm, this is hard work. He says, you think this is glamorous? He said, I do this 40 weeks a year. He said, I'm here in the Philadelphia Home Show for eight days. Next week, I'm at the Iowa State Fair, and that's when the light bulb hit. I said, Arnold. Yep. Have you ever seen Discovery Channel? He said, I don't get time to watch television. I don't even know what that is. What's Discovery? I said, Arnold, I said, all I can tell you, if let's let's do a deal. I want to be, I want to be a partner with you and let's form this deal and I, we'll film it. I've never filmed anything before, but we'll take it over and put it up on Discovery if we can cut a deal with those guys. So we wow. did. And we just paid them a percentage of sales in the beginning and, and it just went pew. So they let you come on like with no money out of pocket and a percentage of sales. I gave them 800 bucks and they ran, they ran it, they, they filmed it and they ran it 30, they filmed it, for you. filmed it and they ran it 30 times, 30, yeah. 30 minute airings wow. and filmed it for $800 total. And it ended up, eventually it did hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, over sure. time. Everybody familiar with the Ginsu yeah. night? Yeah. So, um, and, 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 but, but that's when things changed also because Arnold said, he said, Kevin, when you were at that Philadelphia home show, did you see any other the pitch guys there? I said, what do you mean? As he said, oh, they, did you meet Billy Mays? How many have heard of Billy Mays before, right? Okay. I said, I didn't see Billy. Where, who's Billy? He said, oh, he's Billy. He says, I'm a knife guy. He says, Billy does automotive. He does cleaning. He does this. I said, I want to meet him and I'll pay you a commission. And I want to, he says, I got 15 of these guys. So he introduced me to John Parkin. We, anyone ever see the, the car wax show where we lit the Rolls Royce on fire and, and okay. So we did the first, we did the car wax infomercial. We did all these kitchen shows. We did, uh, we did all of uh, uh, Billy May's early stuff in, in the very beginning. But then we started, then we 
got Jacqueline and the juicer and Tony Little and fitness and, and all of this. So I ended up, um, um, needing to get financing because I was a young kid when I did this stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, my question is, how did you guys source all the product and be able to fulfill the demand right. on the orders? Well, the sourcing wasn't so tough because guys like Arnold were already selling the right. products. Right. They were already manufactured. They were already, you know, I could order product and, and ship it. So that wasn't the problem. But, um, you know, it, it, the problem was is that we were running the infomercials and like that time on Discovery, that six hour block, I, I signed a national contract with Discovery National. And, and this was back in the early 80s for an exclusive contract for the six hours. Wow. I was giving them a thousand bucks a day for six hours and it was generating 28 million in, in sales annually. Okay, <laughs> so if you do the math, that's $365,000 for the media against $28 million in sales. Right. And now they figured that out. And when the contract That's expired, yeah, for Royal. <laughs> so when the contract expired, the time went from north to 20 million bucks. Oh, for sure. Right. I, and I, bail, I bailed out because I'm well, like- Well, in many ways, you probably real, made them realize the value they had oh, yeah. in, they in had that no, space. They had, I mean, they thought it was just, hey, just dead air, yeah. right? So, but then we went to Lifetime, then we went to Nashville, then, and, and then the next step of this evolution was, here I was, I was. I had Arnold Morris, Billy Mays, Jack LaLanne, Tony Liu. I had 150 infomercials. And all of them had grown, gone like this. And then just like, like movies, when a movie comes out, it goes whoosh. And then what? It's, it dies. Because you've either seen it or you're not going to see it. They, don't, they can't keep it in the theaters forever. Right. They bring new movies in. Right. So everything, it's a bell-shaped curve. So here I was, 1990, I was sitting with this library of shows. And I said, I invested, number one, in the manufacturing in some cases. I've got all the supply. I've got the tooling. I've got the infomercials. I mean, Tony Little's infomercials, he required me. I had to produce uh, these videos along with it. And he, and he wanted big budget videos with talent. And I was spending a quarter million dollars to shoot an infomercial with Tony Little. And, and that then would go up. And it would do hundreds of millions, right. but then it would die and it's dead. And were these like partnerships with them or more like JVs where you would get up a so percent every of Every deal that I did in the early days, I, 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 what I did was licensed their product and their name mm. for a royalty. Got it. And then I put up all the money got and it. I got all the sales. Got it. So, so now, Tony Little, when we did the Ab Isolator, his yeah. first infomercial, uh, he got 5%. Yeah. He got 5% royalty. We did 350 million. He made 17 something million, and 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 I made a nice profit also. But it wasn't like I was making 50 million and he was making 17. You know, I mean, when we paid him his 17, we we, we had a nice profit ourselves. But the reality is, we we were funding. I mean, Tony showed up for one day to shoot the show. And then we had to run it every day, hundreds and hundreds of times, ship it, customer serve it. But every month, I mean, he was getting a million dollar check a month. He's sitting there combing his hair. That's it, man. Hey, he, listen, he did a great job, though. Yeah. I mean, he, he developed the pitches, yeah. right? So now, so this is what I was sitting in 1990, and I said to myself, okay, we've done great, but what can we do from here? And I said, well, what other industries can I look at that I might learn something from? And I said, well, I just said it earlier. What do, you know, movies go like this, but what do they do? Oh, they dub them into foreign languages. Yeah. They go to Europe, they go to Latin America, they go to, they dub them in, and they run them in 150 countries in dozens of languages. I said, I wonder if I can do that. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Cannes Film Festival in 1990 in France. I took out a 10 foot by 10 foot booth and, and this was the one international show where every television network in the world came once a year to buy movies and TV shows for their stations. And so here I was, Rupert Murdoch comes by, he owns Sky Channel. Yeah. And so I got his people, we had a meeting. Oh, they go dark at midnight. Okay, well, we're gonna pick up. They come back on at 6 a.m. And the same thing, the Arab radio television, A-R-T, um, Sheikh Salah Camel, he's at this event. His people, we have a big meeting, and they're like, hey, we have five channels in 
20 countries of Arabic speaking countries. They, with movie channels. It's a kid's channel, a sports channel, a movie channel, but they go dark at midnight, they come back on at 6 a.m. We picked up 30 hours a day in, in, the, in the, all the Arabic countries. We picked up dozens of hours a day with Rupert Murdoch on Sky Channel across 16 countries. Wow. Did the same thing in Asia, Latin America, Dubai. And so that was our next step was if there's bars on the screen in the U.S. There's got to be bars know, else, there's, elsewhere. There's bars on the screen. So uh, I'll show you this in just one second. There's bars on the screen right. in other parts of the world, right? And that's what we started doing is cutting media deals. So now people say to me, but... How do you take Tony Little, Jack Lane, George Foreman, all these guys, and run them all around the world? Do you, do you, have to, do you find like a Spanish Tony Little in Spain and, yeah. and produce it? Hola! <laughs> Me amo Tony Paquito. I said, no, I said, hey, we can't, if you had to do that, it, 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 you, wouldn't get the, you wouldn't get the benefits right. of having this beautiful U.S. infomercial. And by the way, we did try this where we would try to find a local Tony Little. We never found anyone as good as the Tony Little, right? So this is what we did. We dubbed every infomercial we had into dozens and dozens of languages and cut deals with all of our foreign partners that were media companies. Wow. We had media partners in every country in the world. And this one is, for example, Dutch. So watch this. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Do you know, did you know what they said? Oh, good, because no one else does. Okay. That's great. Thank you. We had so much fun doing this. And, of course, you know, Tony Little, he, he started getting spoofed on. I mean, has anyone seen some of the stuff? They just did a it's Cricket Wireless did one. Geico did one on Tony Little. And so. Um, so the real question is, do you own a gazelle? Uh, I, I did. You yes, did own a gazelle? I did. I did own one. Okay. <laughs> um, I try to use the products yeah, that course. I sell. Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, uh, it's it's it it's a lot of fun to uh, to be involved in, in in some of these cool products. Sure. So um, and and so yeah, we've had you know for every success though we had multiple failures. Mm -hmm. And so people say, well, did you know what was it like to fail? And I'm like, in the beginning it hurt when we failed, but then I realized. You know, we're, you're not going to hit on everything. You got to test, test, test. They say test before you invest big money, and I say fail fast and fail cheap. So this is kind of what started happening now as I transitioned here. Okay. okay so so now. Um, so just to put a pin in this real quick, because I think this is a valuable point. He already invested in the asset, right? And he just took that same asset and found new opportunity because to dub it probably wasn't that expensive, right? 2000 bucks. Right. To and, dub he, and he took his proven concept to other markets and showed them what was possible and then just started monetizing the same asset over and over and over again, 24 seven. So, and when I went to uh, in my meeting with Rupert Murdoch's people, Sky Channel, yeah. they said, they said, first of all, Yes, we're all over England, but we're on this satellite called Astra Satellite. And I said, oh, what's that? They said, well, it actually goes all across Europe. So our programs that we run in England can be seen in Germany, Holland, France, etc. cetera. So um, they said, so it, this is what you could do. You run one video signal, but we're going to lease, we can, you can rent eight separate audio tracks yeah. so that simultaneously, you, you, you're going out with one video, but in Germany, they pull down the German track and listen to it in German. In Holland, they pull down the Dutch track. This is all part of the technology that existed because they had to, you know, the, 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 there was a lot of multilingual things going on in Europe. In the U.S., it's one, it's one video, it's one currency, it's one language. In Europe, it was 16 languages, 16 currencies, 16 countries. We had to clear customs in every single country when we first did this. So, so at the end of each show, 
We would give you, I should have brought that slide, 16 phone numbers. If you're in Spain, call this number. If you're in Germany, call this number. And because we had local. Because you, you, you had the same asset and then you needed all the yeah, numbers. We had, but I had to go over the whole c country of Europe setting up wow. phones and fulfillment and banking and customer service in every single country. That took me about eight months to do that all across Europe, okay? And so we had these service providers that were unbelievable. We had media partners and and so hey we were cranking away so we decided we you know I'd been financing this out of my own profits right. and my you know when I started this business I, I didn't have a lot of money because I needed tens of millions so what I do um, uh, I think let me see if the next slide yeah we went public and so I mean one of the things that I like to talk about and and we're going to talk about another one here coming up national media was the company um, and, and my company was called quantum international we merged it was this was sort of a SPAC yeah. how many have heard of the term SPAC special purpose access acquisition corp right so this I merged my company into a public company and I became public stock was a buck a share and we went, I had millions and millions of shares, and we went to 20 some plus wow. dollars. Uh, quickly, by the way. So this I mean, was a massive liquidity event. It for happened you. over about three or four, you know, over, I say quickly. Within three years, we were uh, double digit stock. And, um, and then went to, to 20 bucks in like the fourth or fifth year. And that was my first, this was my first uh, taking chips off the table. Because, uh, but what, what was that moment like? I mean, because I mean, all, all this craziness and everything that's going on, that moment when you get there and you're finally like realizing the investment in yourself and taking the chips off the table, what was that like? Well, so uh, the good news is I had made money all along. So I've been making millions, but it was now kind of a lump sum situation to be able to get tens of millions. And uh, I mean, it was it. it, it came pretty close to making me cry, okay, I'm gonna tell you, because it, it, the first time, and this is back in the, you know, this is in the early 90s, so how many years ago is that? You know, it was a long time ago. Um, and I was a kid, you know, so, um, but it, 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 it just, it, I said to myself, because, as we were growing our business, we were getting knocked off. People were, were, were ripping us off. I mean, I had, we had to, in the early days, the, the different mistakes and things that we didn't know what was happening because we had to issue credits to people. So I had to trust somebody to issue credits. Well, one day my accountant, my auditors came in. They said, what are you selling for a thousand dollars? And I said, Nothing. We, we sell $29 knife sets and $59 uh, blenders and mixers and choppers and food, food processors and grills. He said, well, you issued 15 $1,000 credits last month. I'm like, oh, really? Well, who's that to? Let's check it out. Well, it was a, a ring of people in my accounting department that had been do doing this to themselves and their friends and relatives for, for about nine months wow. to the tune of $270,000 that they had stolen from me, you know? But these are the things that we, we learned in the early, I mean, we, we were cutting, we, we were writing software for all these kinds of systems and media software right. to, to deal with 1,200 TV stations right. and, and, a 12, and, a, and 120 cable networks. So uh, we were investing and building and investing and building and and this was 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 the first um, kind of taking the chips off the table right so um, I sold my e equity and then I got the phone call from home shopping network and they said you know we're working with this Tony little guy but you you know you've done you know at, by that time we had done almost a billion dollars in sales with Tony Little at this company. Just Tony Little. Just Tony, just that one guy. What was the totality of everything at this point, like in, in revenue wise? We were doing six, five, 500 plus million a year. So, you know, over, if, the, course if, if, over the course of 10 years, you know, there's, you know, billions. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we had Tony, we did, I got a phone call from Chris Jenner in 1990. She says, I'm watching this Tony Little guy. She said, he screams and yells. He's a little, you know, offensive. She said, my husband, Bruce Jenner, is, he's a decathlon champ, and but he's never endorsed anything. You, you know, maybe we'd like to do something with you. And we showed him a couple products. We did five infomercials with them. We did about $800 million in sales with wow. the Jenners when, when Bruce was Bruce. Uh, <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, he was an unbelievable pitch guy, I'll tell yeah, you. But, he was. But, but Chris... She was the ball buster of the family, well, I'll tell you and that. And now you okay. see the fruits of that later. Yeah. 
I mean, we, she negotiated all the contracts and we're like, wow, she's really stepping up to the table here, you know? And so, and I'm still friendly with um, the Jenners. I'll, I'll talk about something we did with, with Chloe Kardashian recently. But um, so, so I, I, I moved to Florida in a venture with HSN. And, and so the very first project that I do at HSN is with Tony Little, and, and this is how crazy it was. Because when we did infomercials, we would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and yeah. six months to produce it. And, and I, I, I get down to HSN, it, it was August of 1994, and I've and got my TV on, and my, all the offices had live HSN in your office, right? Because you're part of HSN. I had a 50-50 partnership. I own 50%, HSN owned 50 of Home Shopping Network Direct. <laughs> And what we were was they had 50,000 products a year. So here's another learning point. I said, let me take the top 50, okay? I don't want 50,000. I want the top 50, and I'm going to do infomercials on those. That was Tony Little. That was Jack LaLanne. That was George Foreman and, and Billy Mays. And, and they were, I mean, we put Billy on, boom. That product go to the, you know, OxyClean, you know? So we started, we would let... HSN, 24 hours a day, they're running dozens and dozens and hundreds of products, and I just get a report at the end of the day, what are the top sellers, and then every week, and then every month, and that's, I focused on the winners. And so, um, so I said to Tony, why don't we just shoot a live infomercial? Uh, I mean, you're, you're gonna go on tomorrow at, at 10 o'clock, let's make it 30 minutes, and we're gonna, you do that live, and we'll just pull that off, and we'll run it as an infomercial. And he said, he said, Kevin, he says, well, what, what, why would that work? He says, this is just live TV, but you got to do all these fancy edits and all this stuff, right? I said, let's give it a try. So, so here I am at HSN, literally for like a week in a venture with Home Shopping Network. And I say, I want to take that footage and just rerun it all around the world. And we did, and it did $380 million, cool. the very first one. So HSN is saying, well, we got all these assets sitting in our company, right? And so that, that it was an amazing relationship. And um, uh, Tony Little and I continue to do projects. We both, it, it, and this is where it gets really bizarre. Um, it's a home shopping network. It's a pretty aggressive, you know, selling and pitching and everyone's seen it. It's, it could be considered a little bit of a hard sell, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Tony, he, he would get up and bark and, and pitch and, and, and boy, so did Billy. And, you know, and so one day um, I get a phone call, the, the big corporate change at HSN. Um, the management's all gone. New guy comes in, it's Barry Diller. And Barry Diller just bought Home Shopping Network. And he calls me and he says, I want to meet with you. I want to talk to you about your business. And I said, because I'm partners with Barry Diller now. And I said, oh, great. He says, no, it's not great. He says, I don't like infomercials. He said, he says, I don't think I'm going to like you. And he said, well, this is a great way to start off a relationship. Shall I bring some wine? And he said, so I go in to meet him. He says, no, I don't like any of this. He said, in fact, that Tony little guy, I'm done with him too. He said, his yelling and screaming on the air, I can't take that anymore. Get out of here. And what was and producing revenue-wise at that point? Oh, we were doing hundreds of millions. Like, Tony Little was doing... Let me just get rid of this yeah, hundreds of millions. Of yeah, years. Tony Little was 70 million a year like clockwork. Boom, 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 yeah. And so I said to Tony, you won't believe what just happened. I said, but I have contracts, okay? You, you know, Tony had no... Con he was just... would go on and sell and whatever. But I had a contract this thick that said he couldn't just... Just say oh, yeah. goodbye, okay? Right. So I had a lease on the Home Shopping Network's uh, campus, and I had, and by the way, I said, what is it you don't like about the hundreds of millions of dollars? He said, oh, you wouldn't have done any of that if it weren't for this company, Home Shopping Network. You're using our name. You built this on our basis. I don't, I don't like that. I'm like, dude, this was a zero. This, there was no company here. We started this from scratch. Yeah. And by the way, how do you, how, you know, how do you, how do you create a hundred million dollar business? Because we were doing three hundred plus million. It went from three hundred to two hundred to one hundred to fifty to close it down. They shut it down, and that was it. And Barry Diller, then they, he got thrown out by the board and bought out or whatever he did. And um, they came back to me and said, "Hey, 
Can we get that Tony Little and Billy Mays back back over here now? So I said yes, we will. And Tony's now back at HSN. So and he's still he's still there to this day. Oh yeah, Tony's on every week. No way. Every week. He I sells, love that guy. Tony sells um, low carbohydrate uh, pastas, uh, high protein cheesecake. He sells bison burgers and really? bison jerky. If you ever need a young Tony Little lookalike, this guy All right here. Right. Hey. Uh, yeah. So so the. Um, a couple quick more things. I don't want to take all, all day here. But um, so the one thing that kind of happened here, um, because I, I had built now as seen on TV, uh, dot, I owned as seen on TV dot com and as seen on TV Inc. And we had hundreds of websites. And we were, I mean, just this one website, just think of this, um, you know, um, as seen on TV dot com without me spending one dime, was doing millions of dollars a month in sales wow. organically. Just because people would Google, you know, I saw something on TV, they'd end up on our site and they'd buy it from us. And so, um, so now I, I, I had a chance to go down and, uh, and meet Richard Branson. And has anyone ever been to Necker Island before? Have you been down to see Richard? Okay, so I got an invite to go down and, and I was going to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Richard. And, and so I just summarized the whole, the whole I, was, I was only there for a couple days, but Richard and I are sitting there talking. He says, Kevin, he says, I know you're here to get some, some, some advice and I'm, I'm going to help you. He says, I think I got some good ideas for you because I've been following the stuff you're doing and that's pretty amazing. You know, you built Tony Little's brand, you built Billy May's brand, you helped build Jack LaLanne and George Foreman. He says, but who, who did you forget? I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, you mean me? I didn't do me? He said, yeah. He said, you didn't build your own brand. And, and I said, you know, Richard, I said, Tony and I just went to this big fitness expo together and we go walking down the aisle. Everyone's going to Tony. They don't even know who I am. Yeah. And they're like, Tony's Tony, Tony, I've got a new product for you. And Tony's like, oh, but hey, he felt bad because he's like, I'm the guy that financed it, did it, paid him. I paid him. 80 million dollars in royalties or something right so he's like you got to talk to kevin and they're like no we want to talk to you tony you're the guy you know so so i'm like richard branson you're right i never built my own brand and he said you got to do it you got to go home and start making it happen what do, you, what do you think in that time frame of not building your personal brand might have cost you if you could quantify you know it? look I, this is the thing i was making a lot of money stocks, building companies, selling and, and all that. So I, I, I can't say that, you know, not building my brand cost me a ton, but it's, you know, today the world is different. Right. I mean, it's, this is a, a, a world where you can build your brand and, and, and that can be more valuable than anything else you have. And so, um, so I went home and, and I said, okay, I'm going to create this for me. And I'm going to write, I wrote a book about it and it was called how to become a key person of influence in your industry. And I created, it's a seven step system. And this is an actual book, by the way. Um, and it, it, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, this is part of the process here. That's significant is raising your profile, building your brand, creating content, right? And, um, you know, yeah, you got to know how to pitch. You should publish, you know, write books, do podcasts and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I just, I told the group that I'm sitting with here earlier, my last book is, is called Mentor to Millions. Did anybody hear about it or see the book Mentor to Millions? Okay, a few of you did. So um, uh, I, the publisher asked me up front, he said, would you, would you do 100 podcasts to promote this book? And I said, absolutely. And I said, what's the number one podcast in the world? And he said, well, the, the, the most downloaded podcast is Adam Carolla. Yeah. And I said, well, guess what? I said, I'm going to, I said, I'm going to shoot the video. I said, Hey, I shot a video to Adam Carolla. Hey, Adam, it's Kevin Harrington, a shark from Shark Tank. And I've, I've got a new book. I bet you, you've got mentors in your life. And I bet you mentor a lot of people. We've got an amazing set of stories. And I think we could have a lot of fun if I got on your podcast, share some of those stories and let me know if you'd be interested. Love to c come hang out with you for a little bit. Within three hours, I got a call, they booked me, and we did it, and then he liked it so much, we did a second one at another time. But now that I got the number one, right. I got the number five, the number 10, the number 50, the number, and so after I did 100 podcasts, my publisher said, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? I said, 
well, it was a little grueling, but he, <laughs> he said, can you do another hundred? Okay. And I said, well, we got, to, we did, we did 200 podcasts. I had a co-author of the book and um, we hit number two on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list and USA Today. Yeah. And by the way, this was part of this plan. Okay. And so, yeah. I mean, and, and, and for example, you like partnerships, create some amazing partnerships. Zig Ziglar had passed away. I went to the family, cut a deal to start re-releasing all of Zig's content in digital. And, and we've done over $10 million in sales now with Zig's stuff. That was an amazing partnership. So anyway, make a long story short, I, Richard Branson motivated me to go build my brand. And after the first book I wrote, I was promoting it. And this is, this is when Mark Burnett was out looking for a shark. So it was after meeting Branson, writing books, creating content, raising my profile that got me on Shark Tank, okay? And I said, it, it was a great timing wow. for me to, to, to get all of that advice because that changed my life, right. Shark Tank. And, and I, so Richard Branson, in many ways, was a, had that mentor moment with you, right? That gave you the permission to see yourself differently Absolutely. than you saw yourself. One-on-one one -on -one with Richard is, is, is pretty amazing down at his island. And, um, um, and, and, and so had, had a great time. This was, was a lot of fun, but um, so, so let me ex explain a little bit of, of what's happened now for me, because someone said, do you still do infomercials and stuff like that? Um, so um, along the way, I saw there was some bad stuff happening in the world of television. It's no secret. I mean, I have two boys, uh, two kids, one's 32 and the other's 23. Now my 32 year old does watch a little TV because he's got a couple of kids, but my 23 year old Never. just has internet. He doesn't even have cable. Now, and 60 million people have cut the cord from pay cable television, okay? So here I am, the As Seen on TV guy, As Seen on TV Inc., As Seen on TV .com. Right. And, and what's happening, I'm, 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 my sales, and it was a bell-shaped curve, and it was starting to go like this. Why? Because 60 million people weren't seeing my stuff anymore. And so eight years ago, I said, I need to do something. I see the handwriting on the wall. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Sold it all. As every has seen a TV um, asset that I had, from the dot-com to the ink, to hundreds of websites, to global partnerships and stuff, sold it all came out really great and I said, I'm now gonna focus in the world of um, two things. Number one, you know, I'd been on Shark Tank and, and, and had some success there and had built my brand a little bit. So I said, I wanna, I'm gonna start advising companies and joining boards. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanna do eight years ago. And, and I'll still launch a few products, but th that's not gonna be my full, my, my full time business is gonna be helping companies and helping uh, entrepreneurs and pubcos and whatever it might be. So, um, so I'm going to tell the story of the very first pubco that I got involved with. Right? Has anybody here heard of a company called Celsius? It's an energy drink. Let me see. Oh, okay, we got a lot. Great. Some water. I just had one uh, yesterday. Right? Okay. So, I. My, it, it, this is a crazy story. I sold all my all the as seen the TV assets. A guy that worked for me over at Home Shopping Network called me. His name was Jerry David, and he said, "Hey, Kevin." He said, "I'm the CEO of this new company called Celsius. It's it's a startup. They're 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 barely doing a million dollars in sales. They did go." They did a little public offering to try to raise a few bucks. Um, it's a pink sheet, not, it's, it's not fully reporting, but the stock's only trading at 22 cents. He said, so I'd love to get you involved. Um, I can get you a block of stock to join the board. Um, come on, you know, will, you, will you come take a look? So I said, yes, I'll take a look, Jerry. You're a good guy, and Jerry's my buddy. And so I got, I, I got involved, I joined the board, I got a, 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 a big block of stock in the company. And so um, we started doing some stuff and I, and, and I said, as, as, we, as, as the board was, was looking at this company, I said, so who are our competitors? Red Bull, Monster, Bang, some of the, uh, these, are, these are, yeah, Pepsi, Coke, <laughs> et cetera, right? And, and my, meanwhile, so we now, we were number nine in the energy business, okay? And I said, yeah, because how do you get into 7-Eleven when you're competing against these guys, right? Well, 
I said, how do you get into 7-Eleven? I'm gonna show you a creative way to do it. We're gonna start bringing on promotion, influencers. And this is not just put it on the shelf and hope that it sells. I mean, do you think, don't you think Red Bull and Monster have huge budgets that they're promoting the, the, the sale of this product off the shelf? Right. What the hell is Celsius doing? Nothing. So they're not gonna even put it on the shelf. So, so here's the first thing that, that I did when I got involved, and I'll show you this. By the way, we, the, the beauty of this product, we had a clinic, seven clinical studies that allowed us to say that you drink one can of Celsius burns. and it burns 140 calories in your body. Wow. And, and so, but that is hard to show that on the can, on the shelf, because people don't care. Okay. They're like that, that, I'm walking to buy the energy drink categories. Okay, there's Red Bull and there's Monster. Maybe Celsius was there, but you didn't know that. You got to tell the story. Right. So. Flow puts this out. We're doing thousands of, of video distributions. Then Chloe Kardashian says, oh, I follow Flow. I know you know my sister Kim. Would you send me some cases? And so then Chloe is blasting this thing out. And, and we went full bore fitness, Instagram, influencers. Okay, so now this, this company is just clicking along. We're 22 cents a share. Let's see here. All of a sudden, wait a minute, Whoa. I joined the board. It's up to $3.65, starting to run. Oh, wait a minute, on the rise, here we go, $9.80. And meanwhile, 20 cents. Huh, from 20 cents, but wait, there's more, okay? Okay, wait till you see this. Look at this one, guys and girls. 70 Whoa. freaking dollars, baby, five billion, yeah. So it says $65, give or take, right now. It's down a touch from the peak, but here it hit $78. From, look, look, at, look at what it says here. And this, by the way, this is 2020. The stock is $2, 2020. This is a year later. Right. We're a $5 billion company. So th this is what we do, is that we focus, we have thousands of fitness Instagram influencers, and my 22 cent stock is, it's just, I just, we, I just did a $300 million placement this week, myself and a few other of the insiders to sell some of our stock into wow. the market. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. So thank you. Thank you. Are you guys seeing how valuation is created? Yeah. I mean, are you seeing this? And just getting creative, repackaging, repositioning, bringing his value to a company in exchange for equity. He could have went in there and said, hey, give me a million dollars, $2 million. I'm Kevin Harrington. Uh, who cares? Yeah. Like this is where he creates all his wealth. The, and, and, I mean, one other example of what we did with Flo. So the, we, uh, you, I love trade shows and yeah. we go to all the trade shows. So we're at the, um, um, the beverage trade show and Flo is in our booth. And, and so you know, he's signing and people are loving it. And, and so this, the, the, the people from 7-Eleven come to the booth and they said, um, just so you know, we are making a decision at this show, whether we put Monster in our 8,900 stores or whether we put Celsius in our 8,900 stores. By the end of this show, we're gonna make that decision. So we're all sitting around, flows there. We're like, hey, let's come up with something creative. Let's do a private concert tonight at the Boom Boom Room in, in, at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas for just the energy drink buyers. 7-Eleven uh, and, and, and all the different, you know, Publix and Kroger's. And right, right. we had about 30 buyers there that night for a private concert from Flo. Creating more value we for your customers. Walked out of there with the 7-Eleven contract. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, 
it, it's just, you know, you just, you got to do things a little different. I mean, here again, we're going head to head against Red Bull and Monster. Yeah. How are we going to do it? These guys are worth, by the way, I think Monster's like 50 billion. Yeah. Okay. We were 2 million up against 50 billion, but now we're 5 billion up against 50 billion. So, so, you know, so this is the shift for me. Um, but, but I don't just join a board. I bring my direct to the consumer strategies to the table to the new board. So somebody said, well, what other companies are you involved with? So one of the companies I'm involved with is, is called Optech and they have these robot machines that go, they're like Roombas. You know, Roombas clean your carpet. This is a machine that goes through corporations at night and sterilizes and cleans. It's like a $5,000 robot that, that cleans at night when the, everyone's gone. And so we're, we've got digital funnels that we built for that and, and all of that. So, I mean, that was a stock. It was 10 cents or no, I forget what the numbers were, but it was like, I think it was two cents. It went to 15 cents or something. I mean, you know, I mean, every one of these has to start somewhere and get to somewhere and then go somewhere further. So, uh, but that's, it's, it's about creating value. It's, it's about creating unique um, propositions in, in the pitch, et cetera. So, I mean, uh, the bottom line is, is that um, the, the, for me, I, I just, I, I love helping companies that are at that critical point of needing capital or needing some kind of a little jolt to, to, to the system. And how to many bring companies have you seen in? that actually like need that capital and they need that mentorship and that guidance to get to that next level? I mean, we're uh, every single day I'm, I'm running into companies that need, right. that need sort of money. A rhetorical question yeah. is like every company that e wants everybody. to grow. I mean, everybody needs money. Exactly. I mean, and, and by the way, we, I invest still. I mean, like, for example, um, I got the rights to Celsius for India. So I'm in, I, I went to Coca-Cola bottling in India. They're my partner. And I put up the first money to launch it. And we're going we're gonna to launch Celsius in India. Um, so because that, it's, it, we got 30 Bollywood stars ready to go with the same model we used here in the United States. So, um, you know, I like to come into companies. And if, if it's money that we need, I, I can put money in, but I can, I, I can also go raise money. Sometimes it's better if I don't put the money in because then I'm going to be all over the deal, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, so I, 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 I've got, I've, I've raised probably $800 million for ventures that I'm involved with as part of what I do when I come in. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I don't, I mean, I got a ton of questions for you, but it's not about me. It's about the community here. So I want to open it up. You want to slide over back on the carpet if you want. Um, that's why I put this thing here. You would have ended up in the lake in a minute. Uh, so so uh, I want to open it up to the uh, to the members. I want you to, when, if you have a question, I'll call on you. Stand up, say your name, your company, and how much revenue you're doing, just to give them some context, and then ask your question. Who wants to go first? All right, Kevin or uh, Anthony, stand up. What's up? We just met. He was well, just up. just hu humor me. Our company is a proof providers network. It was my partner. We would do a uh, little over eight million dollars this year. We were having a conversation, and he was going to spill the beans about a funny moment with Barbara. So now you got to tell the story. Oh yeah, Barbara Parker. Oh yeah. So, so people ask me, hey, what's one of the funniest or craziest deals you did on Shark Tank? I mean, I did a, I did about two, a couple dozen deals. One, one, and this isn't the Barbara one, but I invested in a cat toilet training system. It teaches the cat to jump on the toilet, go to the bathroom. That was used, City Kitty, right? It was used in uh, Meet the Fockers. You know, when, okay. De Niro was had the cat jumping yeah, up, all right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the, one of the, this was a crazy one. This guy named Cactus Jack comes walking out. He's got his cowboy hat on. He's got the holster and got a big belly on him. And, and, he's, and he's pitching. He's, he comes out and he says, I, gotta, I have a fitness product, right? And so um, it's like it's a cowboy pitching fitness. Like, what? His name is Jack, Cactus Jack. So, um, and he says, look, he said, um, he says, I can't do push-ups because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too overweight and this and that. But he says, let me, let me show you. I invented the body jack. And he gets down on the floor and it's an assisted push-up machine. So he rattles off like 50 push-ups. This big, heavy, fat guy, okay, with a cowboy hat on and holsters. And, you know, I mean, it's like, what the heck? You know, so anyway, so he's looking for 180 grand for his business. And Barbara and I, so we, we huddle. We say, okay. Cactus, tell you what, 
we like, you know, the, the product looks good. You, you gave a good pitch. I, you know, I think people will use this. Some of the other sharks came up. Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. And so we said, we're going to give you the money under one condition. You got that big belly in front of you there, okay? You got to lose 30 pounds in, in 60 days. And if you do, we'll write you the check for 180 grand. And if not, you get nothing, okay? So he, Cactus said, done. I'll do it. Well, what we did, this was beautiful for us because now we got to bring him back and do another segment with Cactus. He came back for the weigh-in and he, and he lost 31 pounds in 60 days. Awesome. And, and we wrote the big checks for him. And that was, I mean, everybody was just cracking up on that one. So, I mean, who, can you imagine going into a bank and getting money and they're saying, we're not going to lend you the money unless you lose 30 pounds. They should. They should. They should. Because like, like we're investing in you. Yeah. Go lose some weight. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what, yeah, we, that's what we said, and 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 we, we had a lot a lot of fun with that one. But, that's awesome. Um, any yeah. other uh, any other questions? That was your time, guys. It's like this is why this container's here. Like, so if you got a question, raise your hand, stand up. Nobody. Oh, okay. Great, Nick. Uh, Nick Alfano, I'm one of the coaches here. Uh, I just had a question. Do you think that entrepreneurship is something that you're born with, like DNA? Uh, yeah. Good question. Good question. Well, so the I, I was my father was entrepreneurial, and uh, so I, I'm fortunate to have an entrepreneurial father, but he also mentored me, and he said, you should start your own business. You should be doing. So, I mean, if I didn't have that, I may not have ended up as entrepreneurial as I am. I, I, I don't know. But um, I, I will say, though, that I took people that were totally f scared of being in their own business, had never done anything on their own, and taught them how to do it, and now they're crushing it as entrepreneurs. So, so I think there, there are people that maybe I got lucky, I think, with some, some entrepreneurial genes, and that helped. But I, I've taken people with no genes, no, I mean, this one guy that I remember, was his father was a lawyer, and his father was like, you can't be an entrepreneur, you got to go to law school, and you got to this, and you got to that. This guy just went out and crushed it as an entrepreneur. So I think it can be learned and, you, and, and be taught, but I do think there are some that maybe start with a little advantage. Got it. Any other questions? Yep. yep. Tony. Uh, Tony, this I'm here with my partner Brandon Bergson, and we have a company that's kind of a wallet with crypto. And I know Mark is kind of wishy-washy on crypto, and some of the bigger guys like Buffett is anti-crypto. I'm kind of curious about your. You know, it, it's um, it, 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 I, I was at an event years ago when Bitcoin was at about three hundred dollars, and these guys were saying. This guy's name was Michael Taggart. I don't know if anyone knows that name or not. Do you know Michael Taggart? Okay. Michael Taggart does a, a mastermind. Yep. 10, 12 people. It's 300 bucks. And, and he's like, everyone was, everyone there was into Bitcoin. Um, I had, and I had purchased a little bit. After that event, I went home. It went to like 500. And I'm like, wow, this thing is going to, this is the golden goose, you know? And, and then a week later, it was down to 100. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is too volatile, you know? So I, I just, at that point, you know, just kind of backed off. Now, my son, who's 32 years old, he's the crypto guy because yeah. I, I think it's something about being younger. Um, he's, he's in Ethereum and, you know, uh, you know probably a half a dozen uh, stocks and cryptos. Um, I, and 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 I I through him I I keep in touch with all of that, but I do hear nowadays there's this huge DeFi thing that's going on. How many are familiar with DeFi? Yeah, I mean I, I, I'm hearing. And by the way, O'Leary is big on it. Cuban is big on it. There, I think you're going to see and 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 and, and I, DeFi is different than just Bitcoin. So I mean, who would have guessed that Bitcoin would have gone? 30, 40, 50,000. I mean, it's back up a little bit lately, right? Didn't Elon come out with a tweet about the Tesla's gonna start maybe taking it again? Yeah. Is it back up over 40 now, yeah. Bitcoin? Yeah, 
It's, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, but I, I would never invest huge money in, in, in Bitcoin, just afraid that one day, it could, I mean, it, it's so volatile, it could lose 40% in, in a day. Well, and how does that, does that go more with your investment strategy? Do you like to invest into things that you know and things that you yes, can bring value and influence right. to? And I have some really good financial advisors. They're, they're not anti-crypto, by the way, you know? So, so we're, 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 we're staying in touch, but there's, there's these, um, this DeFi, I don't completely understand it, but I just know that there's some, has anyone heard of Polygon, for example? Polygon, th th this is one that Cuban is, is heavy in. So if you follow Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary in this DeFi world, uh, you might find some interesting opportunities. And, I, and, I, and so I'm actually talking to O'Leary right now about getting involved with some of his stuff. So I got, I got one question for you, and we're going to have to wrap up because we're going to get our, into our pitch tank. But how important is it investing in the company or the actual entrepreneur? So th that's a very good question. Um, I actually, um, I had a, a, in, in one of the Shark Tank segments, O'Leary said, he, he said uh, that he invests in the jockey. And... And so I said, I said, I, I've heard that saying, O'Leary, I said, but I said, it, it, and that is not my strategy 100% because like I, I actually have made some horse uh, in, investments, horse racing okay. investments. And, um, it, you know, if you get, if you go down, like I, I, I grew up in Cincinnati, not far from Churchill Downs in Louisville, and I used to go to the track a lot, and and sure. and, and and I, I I bet on the horses even to this day. Still, I still an old. I love gambling a little bit, you know. So, <laughs> um, so he just came from Vegas. I was by in way. Vegas, yeah. But um, um, so I said. You know, it, I, there's a guy I stayed at his, and, and for the I went down to went down to Kentucky for the Kentucky Derby two years ago, and I stayed at Kenny McPeak's ranch. He's got 150 acres. He's got uh, about 100 horses on there. He had a Triple Crown winner that came out of there. And I and I said to Kenny McPeak, I said, you've you've heard that statement. I bet on the jockey. He said, he says that's he said that's that's all bullshit. He said he says I can put when my horse gets there. It, it's the doctors, it's the medical, it's the shots, it's the running, it's the what we do here at this farm that I take him over to the track to run. We can put any jockey on that horse. It's the dream team of experts around those horses that have created the, the you know, the, the future. And so actually better answer than I was hoping for. Thank you very much. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, I mean, so my absolute worst deal on Shark Tank, I bet on the jockey. This lady came out. She's the entrepreneur. She needs a half a million for 50 percent of her company. I'm not going to even say what it is because I don't like to talk bad about anybody, but I gave her 500 grand. She ran through it in six months, came back and said, I need more. And I said, I mean, if you'd have had shown me anything positive during these six months, I would consider it, but I'm out. And, and she said, well, closing the doors down, you're, you're out. You're out and you're out of money. It's dead. And I'm like, yeah, I bet on the jockey. She had nobody else around her. And let me tell you the, like the mistake that she made. She had a company with 28 SKUs. 28 different products. And so she gets the half a million. And what does she do? She orders 5,000 of every single item. Wow. Okay? 90% of her volume comes from two products. Okay? Now she had no, she ran out of the two, had no money to reorder, and she's out of business. And I said, you, I said, yeah, she was the jockey, but she had nobody else around her telling her that's a stupid idea. And, oh, and, wow. Okay. So, oh, wow. yeah. A couple of Zoom calls I've been on. Have you yeah, been listening? So, so I, 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 I like a good jockey, yeah. but I also like to see the dream team. I like to make sure that they got a good team around them. Okay. Well, Kevin, uh, for, literally from the bottom of my heart, this is a dream moment for me Thank you. Um, to, to sit up here with you. And, you know, these guys know my story, but two years ago, I was broken, des destitute. Yeah. And so to have this moment right here, like, it, it truly means a lot to me. Hey. I'm, I'm proud, proud to be, be here. Proud, proud to be a partner. Yeah, with, of course. With, with you guys Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yes. We're, we're honored to have you. And yeah. like, you know, G and I are not beyond having mentors and, yeah. and you're one of them uh, for us. And so we just appreciate, appreciate your time and being here. here. 
I love just this kind of get the. I, 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 I was talking to the guy. Said, "How how often do you work?" I said, "I mean, I, I work a lot. But I don't consider this work. You know, coming out here, hanging out. You know, we're, you know, we get to take some pictures, right? Yeah. Uh, do I have to be nice? You have to be nice. <laughs> yeah. You guys are all going to get pictures with Kevin. Don't worry. But we're going to have a ten minute break, um, and then we're going to come back for the first ever multiple club pitch tank. But before we do. Kevin, would you do me the honor to stand up here sure. real quick? Let's show Kevin who we really are. 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 Who are we? 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 Whoa! All right, guys. Hey, right, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. That was great. Ten-minute break, and then we'll, uh, we'll be back for the next day.